All right, welcome to the 15th graduation ceremony for the High Tech High Graduate School of Education. We are so happy to be here to celebrate our graduates. Um, woo! Um, love to thank, first of all, the incredible team of GSU students, faculty, staff, huge shout out to Charity Britt and Haley in particular for pulling together um, all that it takes to make this possible for us to come together and celebrate today, um, both in person and with those that are joining us on live stream from all around the world, and I believe six or so graduates as well, you are. We feel your spirit. You are in the room with us, even if you are joining us from afar. Um, we are excited to honor the accomplishments of the graduating class of 2023, as well as all of the family members and loved ones that have supported them in their journey along the way. Little did you know that you too were signing up to be part of the graduate school journey. Providing high fives to your graduates when major milestones were met, and most probably wiping tears when things got really hard. Without your love and encouragement, our graduates would not be where they are today. So I'd love to start by sharing our gratitude for all of the friends and family that are joining us. If you could please stand up, we'd like to honor you. I also want to give a huge special shout out to all of the children of our graduates, to their partners, to their family members. We know that you have shared them with us and you're probably very excited to have them back um, and maybe a little less on your plates um, as they graduate today. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging the land that we stand on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Kumeyaay Nation. The GSE extends its respect and its gratitude to the Kumeyaay people who have lived here for over a millennia and who continue to live here and steward the land and lead their communities today. Beyond land recognition, we stand with you and are committed to continuing to provide Kumeyaay scholarships. Thank you to Dr. Mark Caban for bringing that into our community. to support and increase our faculty who identify as indigenous and to enrich the learning of our graduates by amplifying their voices. Progress has been made and there's so much more work to do. I would also like us to take a moment to call in our ancestors and to honor those that come before us. May the sacrifices and the progress they made not be in vain. And may we continue to realize our ancestors' wildest dreams. So I wanted to first do a special shout out to all of the graduates, I'm gonna have you stand up, that identify as first gen and are the first in their family to go to college. Could you please stand so that we can recognize you. standing if you don't mind. We'd like to have other graduates join in that you are the first in your family to pursue a master's degree. If you could stand up and join the other graduates. You're going to stand for a while so stay standing. Um, I'd love for those that are not standing yet, if you have had a seed of inspiration or an idea to maybe at some point pursue a doctorate, you've been inspired by your faculty that have done the same, please stand up. You're not committing, you're just saying maybe you have a little idea. <laughs> the graduates all join. You are all um, your ancestors. Please stand up. All the graduates join in. <laughs> um, you all represent in one way or another the wildest dreams of your ancestors. 
and I want to acknowledge some of whom would not have had the opportunity to stand where you are today during their lifetime. So let's recognize that we stand on their shoulders and the progress that they made and also the sacrifices um, that they endured for us to all be here today. So one more round of applause to the graduates. And you can sit. <laughs> Thank you. All right, as we continue to honor our ancestors and also look into the future, as educators, we must acknowledge and repair the harm that has been caused by the history of education in our country. Schooling has too often privileged dominant culture while pushing underrepresented communities to the margins. Over 50 years ago, Paulo Freire argued that the processes of teaching and schooling are never neutral and that each decision we make as educators and as leaders has the potential to either perpetuate or disrupt the status quo. Graduates, as part of the GSE community, you have all been invited to reimagine a more inclusive and just world in which all young people are engaged in the deepest forms of learning. Learning experiences that celebrate and leverage students' unique and complex identities, their experiences, their cultural backgrounds, that encourage students to unapologetically bring their full and authentic selves, and that cultivate students' sense of belonging and agency to make change in the world and build a brighter future. Over the past few years, it's been rough, to say the least. The parallel pandemics of COVID and racial, social, climate, and other injustices have inspired educators to learn, unlearn, and reimagine what might be done differently to advance equity and further collective liberation. Rather than returning to normal this year, a normal that was inequitable by design, your teaching and leadership have shown us that all we need to do is to continue to adapt and innovate if we wish to further justice for all. It's an opportunity in a moment in time where we can pause and disrupt the practices, the structures, and policies that have perpetuated harm and rethink and reimagine together what might be possible. At the GSC, our mission is to prepare teachers and leaders to reimagine education that's grounded in both justice and deeper learning. As alumni of the GSC, you are joining a powerful network of over 334 change makers that actively disrupt the status quo to unleash students' inherent brilliance, inspire work that matters, and create life-changing outcomes, especially for those furthest from privilege. As Bell Hooks, I know we have some Bell Hooks fans in the audience, uh, <laughs> so powerfully has said, we believe in education as the practice of freedom, and that the practice of love is the most powerful antidote to the politics of domination. The word, I got some snaps. <laughs> the word love is often used as a noun, yet Hooks believes we might be better served and love better if we treat it as a verb. She defined love as the will to extend oneself for the purpose of another's spiritual growth or to help another self-actualize and realize their full potential which is what we do every day in our schools, in our classrooms as teachers and leaders for the young people you serve. This is what we set out to do, and we hope that as you continue on your journey, you stay rooted in the love as you work to further justice for all. At the GSE, thanks to the Center for Love and Justice crew, we often call this embodying the spirit of joy existence in our work. Congratulations, class of 2023. We are filled with a renewed sense of hope that our world will shine brighter because of each of you. And I have the honor of welcoming our keynote. You're in for a very special treat. Um, our keynote speaker, Marisol Quevedo Rerucha, first identifies herself as a mother a grandmother, a Chicana, an educator, an author, and a partner. And you'll hear more of her beautiful story very soon. She's also the founder and CEO of HeartSet Consulting Group, an author of Beyond the Surfaces, 
of restorative practices, building a cu culture of equity, connection, and healing, um, which is fabulous. If you have not read it yet, I highly recommend it. Through this work, Mari Soul and her team provide human-centered professional learning to transform individuals, communities, and systems through connection and healing, very connected to the work in the program, transforming self to transform systems. Her lived experience and work focuses on equity and social justice and transforming generational trauma to lead change in, educa in education and in nonprofit systems. She is a former teacher, principal, district leader, and current nonprofit executive, and she uses her voice to challenge systems of harm and, more importantly, to amplify the voices of others. Marisol has been recognized as an equity champion by the American Consortium of Equity and Education and as an equity-focused thought leader by new leaders. Um, before I bring her to this stage, I just wanted to share a personal anecdote. When we first met Marisol, there were a group of faculty, and we sat in circle where Haley and Charity are in the back. And right away, she had us connecting to each other through the power of story and sharing our own stories and journeys in education. And it was like, it was almost like light came into the room and the, the, the skies parted. We just were immediately connecting at a very deep level. Lots of tears, lots of healing just from an initial interaction of getting to know her and her opening up space for us to share our stories and who we are. So I'm very excited for you to have time with her um, this afternoon. And without further ado, I want to welcome Marisol to the stage. Hello. Hello. Hola. Hello. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Hello. Okay, so I'm getting my timer set. Um, okay. So before, um, as we're getting started today, um, what I wanted to do first was to um, acknowledge that you did not choose to have me here. That there was um, a different decision-making body that asked me to come and made that decision for you. And I think it's really important that we understand that's how our system works. But I want to ask your permission to be with you today. May I have your permission to spend the next 14 plus minutes with you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would also like to ask your permission to introduce myself to you. Um, I introduce myself in a way that's a little bit different, but I, and it takes a little bit of time. Um, but may I have your permission to introduce myself to you? Yes, yes thank you. Yes. I am Marisol Quevedo Rerucha. My name is pronounced Marisol. It is not Marisol. Marisol is like nails on a chalkboard of my soul. Marisol, gracias. The reason why my name is so important to me is because it is, a, it is how I, um, as a child, was accepted into my culture. I'm the lightest skin person in my family. I had the lightest hair. I didn't wear glasses like my mom and my brother. But you could not fake my name. And so being Marisol Quevedo was something that was always really, really important to me. When I was a little girl, I would have grown adults. Um, you know, you say, hello, what's your name, Marisol? Oh, that's beautiful. And I'd be like, it means sea and sun. Because mar is the ocean, right? Sea, e, and sol is sun. I'm very proud of my name. My father was one of the first muralists in Chicano Park. When I was born, they came to tell him that I was born, and a, a, one of the other muralists put my name on one of the murals to honor my parents and honor the day of my birth. And so for me, my name is sacred. And I share this with you because once I got into administration and I got so busy in schools, I stopped, I stopped um, making people pronounce my name right because I was too busy. I was, whatever, call me whatever you want. Let's get to it, what we need to get to with our kids for our students. And it was very recent that I reclaimed my name. If it is hard to pronounce, I'll give you options. My former principal friends used to call me Ruchi for my last name, Rucha. Um, you can call, my family calls me Mari. But if you call me Mari, that means that we're family. <laughs> and so we need to have a talk about what that means. <laughs> I am the granddaughter to Camerina Rodriguez Castro from Gomez Palacio Durango. Her family came to the United States in 1926 um, here uh, to Vario Logan, and they worked in the canneries. I am the granddaughter to Carmen Bedoya Quevedo from Sonora, Mexico, 
who ran away with my tata at 13 years old. She had 16 children, 14 who lived. I am one of 51 first grandchildren. I am the granddaughter to Alejandro Castro from San Jose del Cabo and Francisco Quevedo from Sonora, Mexico, both who died decades before my birth. I am the daughter to Irma Castro. I am the daughter to Abraham George Quevedo. I am the mother to Camerina Isabella Rerucha, Emilia Alejandra Rerucha, and Sofia Graciela Rerucha. And I am the very proud grandmother to the three most amazing human beings that have ever walked the planet since the beginning of time. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I have to leave after my speech, but please find me on Instagram or you may email me at Marisol at Heartset Group. I'll send you videos or pictures if you'd like to, to witness the three most amazing human beings that have ever walked the planet since the beginning of time. I introduce myself in that way to you for this reason. It is an honor to be here with you. And I have to recognize that the honor does not belong to me. When I come into any space, when each of us enter any space, we roll deep. We are the product, and I was taught this from my indigenous family, we are the product of seven generations, not just of dreams, but of prayers. We are the product of hope and joy. There are, there are people who prayed for us that never held us, that never touched our skin or looked into our eyes, and they prayed for this moment. We also have the responsibility for seven generations ahead of us to do the same work and to live our lives in the best way that we can so that the world will be a better place for those seven generations forward. And what's really beautiful in my family, I know my blood, I know my tierra, I know the land that my people come from. Some of us don't know that but we have people also who have chosen us in this life and who we have chosen. And we are all the product of those that have poured into us, love, joy, challenge, pain, trauma, all the good things, all the bad things, all the mundane things. We do not stand alone. Our society likes to teach us that individualism is the thing, right? And I think individualism is beautiful. I also think it's BS. Because if we think that we, we got from where we are, regardless of where we started on our own, then we're lying to ourselves, right? Or we've really hurt and damaged and stepped on people along the way. And what, what I'm hoping that we can remember, whatever space we walk into, even if it's just opening that car door and getting in the car, you are rolling deep and you are protected. And what I'm hoping is I want to give you a minute to think about, not a minute I lied. I'm going to give you about 25 seconds. I want you to think about who are you carrying with you? When you enter space, when you walk into your job, when you go into your schools or your principal's office, your assistant, your teacher on special assignment, off, who, are, who are you carrying with you? Who are you honoring? So I needed, I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds to think about who are those people for you? Can anybody not think of anybody? Anybody rolling alone? Okay, so I got 15 minutes, I can do what I want. So. You're gonna stand up and you're gonna move away from your seats. There's a lot of little space over here and you're gonna find somebody that you don't know. Say hello, introduce yourselves, and then we're going to share who you're bringing with you. It's gonna be a lot of noise, so before you start talking, find your person, say hello, and then I'll come back and get you started so we all have equitable time. Are we good? Okay, everybody up. Everybody up, move to the side, find a, find a person. Okay, go ahead and get started. Introduce yourself, share who you're bringing with you. You have two minutes. Thank you. If you could go back to your seats, please. Thank your partners. There are a couple ideas that I, I a couple of seeds that I hope to plant. One of those seeds is that there are things that our society has sold to us that we bought. And what I'm hoping is that we can look at those things, pretend that we still have the receipt from Costco or Nordstrom's because they take everything back. Except Nordstrom's rack, they have a 30-day policy. But and Costco, it can't be, uh, you know, like the dishwashers' appliances. One of those things, one of those, one of those things that I'm hoping that we can that we can give back, and I know that High Tech High focuses on, is that we are more. Um, who we are is not about our title. It's not about how much money we make. It's not about our level of education, but really about who we are in this world for ourselves and for others. And. Um, 
our society, as, as Kelly had mentioned, um, we have accepted that we can throw people away. In schools, traditional discipline is literally killing our kids. If a student is suspended for 11 um, times or more, they have a 50% chance of going into the juvenile justice system. If they do not graduate from high school, they have a nine year, um, their life ex expectancy is nine years less than somebody who graduates from high school. And that's because non-high school graduates have lower access to health care. They have higher rates of stress, um, which result in all of those preventable diseases. So our, our system was created intentionally to push people out. And that's why we continue to have academic disparities, the school to prison to early death pipeline, continued generational poverty, generational inequity, and poor mental, physical, social, and emotional health. And so as educators, we made the decision because we want to impact this, right? And one of the things that I want to leave you with is that we don't need um, you to be saviors for our kids. I don't even want you to think about coming in and serving them. You're not here to be of service because that still puts you in a different place above them. I want you to consider savoring life with them and with the staff that you are charged to be responsible for. As much as you hope that your experience, what you bring to the table will impact them, that you recognize that you are equally impacted and blessed by being on the journey with the kids and the families and the staff that are given to you. And that you will learn just as much, if not more, from them. Because, again, um, this society that we live in, there's this beautiful thing that, that uh, Mother Teresa says. She says, if we have no peace, it's because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And our society has made it okay for us to continuously throw people away. We want them out of our classroom, we want them out of our school, their families, the, is the issues that they may come up with because it's hard work, right? So given that idea, if we have no peace, to me, this is not having peace. The reality that we continue to live with and accept systemic harm that is putting kids in prisons and six feet underground means that we have accepted this. So to embrace peace, we have to really think about what does it mean to belong to each other? If we feel that we belong to each other when we build the opportunity for connection like we just did, right? How many of you felt connected with strangers a couple of minutes ago? More than likely, you would be down for that person, right? If somebody came at them, what would you do? Already, from that one little interaction, because you see them in their humanity. And so the ask is for you to continue to create these opportunities for connection with your staff and with your kids so you can see each other in your humanity. The solution to this issue is we have to be the work and not just talk about the work. Those beautiful mission and vision statements and belief and value statements, learn how to live them. Don't just read them at a board meeting. And be clear about your expectations of how it is that you want to be treated and how you treat others. And face the difficult conversations when people start to break them. My time's up, but it's okay. I'm going to give you one little story. <laughs> so I heard this very recently. Um, there's the difference between buffalo and cows. When a storm is coming, buffalo run into the storm, even though it's dark and it's scary and they may not make it out. Cows run away from the storm. So what happens, the buffalo, right? So the storm's coming, the buffalo, they, they get it together and they push through and they go through the storm. Cows run and what happens? And, it, and they stay in it longer. So I had shared this story recently and someone said, is that where the term coward came from? And I don't, sounds good, right? I don't even know if it's true that buffaloes run and cows don't. I don't know, but I love the analogy. <laughs> and what I want us to do is embrace being the buffalo. If we want to create systems of belonging where we belong to each other, you got to do the buffalo work of learning how to belong to yourself. Do your work, especially in leadership. Get your ego, get your self-esteem, get all of that stuff to, like, get that work done. It is my belief that we are in this world to be the best version of ourselves. To be our best, we got to face what's keeping us from being our best. Be a buffalo, be your best. Thank you for your time, and I wish you the best.
That was incredible. Let's give one more applause for Marisol. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Mark Caban. I thank <laughs> I'm looking at a room full of buffaloes right now. We talked about that in our class uh, this year, so there's a lot of head nodding that was happening. And I love that uh, indigenous knowledge, epistemology that we, brought in, that we brought into the room. And I'm feeling very blessed to be here today. I wanted to start on a note on piety. And when I say piety, I don't mean a dogmatic belief or a blind belief in a doctrine. I'm talking about it more in the way that John Dewey talks about it, which is all that is good in our lives. I am who I am because somebody loved me. I am who I am because somebody cared for me, somebody attended to me. And there's a deep knowledge of the dependency of those that came before me. And when I look around the room today, I, I see a room full of somebodies. Somebody's for the graduates today, which we're gonna give one more round of applause to. You know, there, there's so much overlap with um, Marisol's comments and some of the things that I'm talking about, and it's just from a different tradition. One of the traditions that I love to talk about is Antonio Gramsci. And when he talks about having a commitment to year-round justice, not just kind of a sunshine soldier in a time of really bleak moments for us as a country. And so it's about this critical inventory of the self. Who are we really? What are our traditions? And there's no one identity, there's no one tradition that defines us. We're all hybrids all the way down. But it's really important to figure out what our traditions are, the traditions that will sustain us in these times of, um, of bleakness that we're experiencing as a country and as a, as a global community as well. Cornel West talks about a spiritual blackout. I wanna bring Dr. West into the room today. What is a spiritual blackout? It's something similar to what Marisol was talking about. It's the normalization of mendacity, which is being untruthful. That's right to make it appear that the way that lives happen is the natural order of things. So for example, we believe in justice, but at the same time, we accept that Kumeyaay and indigenous peoples, they live in refugee camps that we call reservations. We normalize drone strikes on Pakistani villages. We normalize children at the border in cages. We accept these things. We normalize the expansion of NATO, the expansion of the military industrial complex. You know, in this moment, as a country, we have 4,885 military units, 587 that are overseas and the rest are in this country. That is an empire. That's 150 special operations happening right now. That is military overreach. And in DC, 53 cents out of every dollar that is spent, is spent on the military, and not military families, but mostly military contractors. And so it's no surprise that we have schools that are struggling, we have health care that is struggling, we have no universal health care, we have no universal preschool, but we as educators, we come from a beautiful tradition, and that's what I, I, I introduced the idea of a tradition and what makes us who we are. One of the ones that we are all familiar with, and I wanted to remind you of this tradition that we have, is radical pedagogy. And Paulo Freire gives us a great example of that. He published a, a, a book after his death, his wife Anna Maria published it, called The Pedagogy of Indignation. And it's about what our choices are as educators. And so far we have made a tragic choice for what we accept in the world but we remain the ones who can determine what the future is. We are, true, subject to many power structures. That is very true. But we do have agency in what we can do. And Ferry also talks about behavioral dissonance. 
And this is true in academia, no matter where you go. It's true at high-tech GSE. It's going to be true at San Diego State University. It's going to be true at Columbia, at Harvard, at UCSD. There is a difference between what academics espouse, even put into their syllabi, and the things that they do in their normal lives. There's a kind of a gap there. And it's the same thing with teachers. And Paulo Freire talked about this in the pedagogy of dissonance. And so one of the things that we really have to do is be in solidarity, is to shorten that gap between what our pedagogy is and what are the things that we want to do into this world. And so there's no better way than that than to be connected to activists. And there's a lot of people in this room that are doing that work. These are LGBTQ activists, the Jewish Voices for Peace, the Palestinian Youth Movement. There's people that are involved with defending the rights of street food vendors. There's, there's all sorts of battles that are happening. And the last thing that I wanted to leave you with as we go out into the world is that your teaching is not your activism. Does that make sense? It's not enough. And we have to recognize this behavioral dissonance between the things that we're putting in our syllabi, the things that we're espousing, the things that we're teaching, and the things that we actually want to do in this world. And so today, the biggest blessing that we have is this community that we've inherited. We're all getting a degree, which is something very, very, very proud for me and for everyone that's in this room. But the thing that's most important is this actual community that you're leaving with. Because you can't be a lone hero protagonist. You cannot do it on your own. You gotta be a part of something bigger than yourself. And today you have something bigger than yourself. You have a community and it is really up to you what you choose to do with that community today. So as you look around, this is this blessed group of people that you're gonna take with you moving forward. And that's the thing that I think we should be most grateful for and the thing that I'm the most proud of today as the director of this program that I've got to be in for the last two years. So thank you so much. Okay, so enough from me. I have the honor of introducing a courageous, bold, vulnerable, loving candidate of this master's program who I am proud to call a friend now, and I think that our friendship is going to be ahead of us right now. All the things that we're gonna do are ahead of us. And I'm so proud to hear from you today. We're gonna to introduce to the stage Ronnie Moore, who's gonna give the students address. Take your time, Ronnie, take your time. Let's give her one more applause as she comes up, come on now. Thank you so much. Did not realize that I was following Mark, but I'll do my best. <laughs> All right. On behalf of the class of 2023, I want to thank the faculty and staff of High Tech High Graduate School of Education for what has truly been an incredible 10 months. This is a full circle moment for me. I was born here in San Diego and I spent my first years living in Point Loma with my family, walking these same blocks that are now home to the GSC and the High Tech High Point Loma campuses. In 2019, 30 years after moving to Indiana, I had the great fortune to be able to return to High Tech High Chula Vista. What I saw was truly paradigm shifting for me. Besides the brilliant second graders who led the tour, I remember most that the walls were packed with impressive, high quality, meaningful work that the students had done. Work that you could tell truly mattered to them, that they were proud of. Work that they had poured hours into, third, fourth, and 15th drafts that they had learned through and from. We understood, as they did it seemed, that they were learning in a space that was nourishing their love for learning. But we knew something else that this kind of experience was unfortunately incredibly rare. And what I saw could not be unseen. Honestly, I wanted to pack up my entire family and move back here and not just for the beach. <laughs> when the What School Could Be Fellowship opportunity came along, I jumped at the chance to study at my dream school. And I have to say it did not disappoint. 
On day one, we were whisked away to study on Kumeyaay lands, diving deep into the deep, important topics right away as we were building community, examining our roles in ongoing colonialism, while we built community through play and movement. We have to thank our instructors and cohort mates for the many ways in which we were pushed to critically examine positions we had long held, and the sheer joy of playing Big Booty <laughs> and learning a dance routine with a large group of adults. Shout out to Roy for, being, uh, for his incredible memory for dance steps and timing. <laughs> to Michelle for showing us what dancing the dance full out looks every single time. And to Mark, whose idea this apparently was. <laughs> Seriously, if you haven't seen it, there's a video floating around out there with arguably the best education leader dance crew in Point Loma giving the best performance of last summer. So you should find that video. <laughs> Over the next months, we were challenged to grow our critical consciousness. How might we challenge systems of power and privilege as we work toward inclusive prosperity? How might we create spaces where students experience belongingness, where they can enjoy fully their rightful presence? We learned how and why to tune into the softest voices in the room, engage with students as co-designers in their own learning experiences, live out our commitment to equity and belonging in our budgets, our agendas and our coaching. In our capstone projects, we took long, hard looks at our schools, isolating areas of opportunity and used plan, do, study, act cycles, closing the gap between research and practice, making changes in real time in our spaces, changes that impact our students now, making our school environments more equitable, more safe, more engaging right now. These 10 months have been a lot about designing learning experiences and environments, but ultimately they've been about how we can grow and develop as leaders in learning communities that grow and evolve to emphasize love and justice. It's been about all these things and survival. You will not catch many of us saying that this work was easy. Many of the graduates before you and online have been working to learn how to build and sustain nourishing school environments while working full time as educators and administrators. Some of us moved here to San Diego from faraway places like Dubai, Bermuda, New York, New Orleans, leaving family, friends, and communities to study and work here. Some of us were holding it down in our home learning communities and spaces, our little coworkers delighting our classmates when they wandered on screen. And some of us were studying here locally in physical community with each other, building relationships, working through job changes, and applying learning to new school communities here. Two of us did this work while preparing for the arrival of our littlest cohort mates. And hats off to you. I'm proud to be a member of this cohort that has been so incredibly loving and supportive of one another. Like High Tech High itself, our learning community has been a nurturing space, and it is my sincere hope that we all keep in touch, continuing to support each other to make positive change in our separate spaces. I have a few thank yous. Thank you to Dr. Capono Ciotti and the incredible What School Could Be team. I truly appreciate your making my studying at the GSC possible. It's been an absolute honor to work with you this year. To Katie Weisberg, thank you so much for your generosity, your grace and support. Thank you for the ways in which you have shown up for us this year. On a personal note, thank you so much for our long talk on the way back from the campground. I was carrying a lot with me when I arrived that I was finally able to begin to let go of because you listened, because you paid such unbelievably beautiful attention to what I had to say, showing me how I could do the same for others. To Dr. Mark Caban, Mark, I cannot tell you how much we have appreciated your warmth, your intentionality, and your generous spirit. Thank you for shaping our experience the way you have by saying the thing, by living your praxis, and for not only challenging, but equipping us to do the same. Thank you for showing us the way. We want to thank the incredible staff and faculty of the GSC, and I'm sorry for not naming every single one of you, but thank you for the innumerable ways in which you poured into and supported us this year. And please forgive me again for not calling you out by name because each of you certainly bears mention. You are heroes, every one of you. Thank you for making possible the kind of education that inspires us to continue questioning, learning, challenging, seeking, and growing. 
We are more capable, conscientious, considerate educators, and we leave better equipped to build and sustain nurturing learning communities because of you. In closing, I would like to share a quote by Sarah Lewis that sticks with me as I think about the bittersweet end of this amazing experience. Masters are not experts because they take a subject to its conceptual end. They are masters because they realize there isn't one. On utterly smooth ground, the path from aim to attainment is in the permanent future. So, high tech high, Master of Education Leadership Cohort of 2023, onward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Okay, so now on to the part that we've all been coming for, um, the awarding of the degrees. And one of the ways that we do that at High Tech GSC is we ask the graduate to come onto stage and then we read some comments that one of the faculty, it could be me or someone else, has prepared um, for you. And we're gonna read that out loud as we give you your degree, okay? So you're gonna take your sweet time and people are gonna <laughs> cheer you on. You're gonna go on from that part and you're gonna, you're gonna do the walk. In your instincts will kick in. Okay, kicking us off. Let's give a warm round of applause for Allison Junt. Okay, now I'm gonna read the comments that I prepared for Allison. <laughs> Allison is a multi-generational Montessori educator who has taught for over a decade. Her children have also received a Montessori education, so it is truly a family affair. This might be one of the reasons she focused her caps on work on parent engagement at her Montessori school after she identified that some parents and students were feeling disconnected from the school community. Allison created a thoughtful plan to engage parents in school events and for students to have more agency in school events. A quote from her capstone, I'm gonna bring it into the room. While the goal of this project was building connection for caregivers, all stakeholders in the education system are interdependent and any work in educational spaces should center students. Another critical learning she had was the importance to, quote, Share the work to increase engagement and reduce burnout. I selected this quote because it was intimately connected to some of the adaptive leadership work that she focused on in the class that we had together. I was witness to her designing tests for herself around her big assumptions, for those that are in exam and leadership, that if she not, did not do it, then it would not get done. That was one of the big assumptions about um, her work that she had. And so she ran a test to see if that assumption was true. Here is what she said. If I don't do things, maybe no one else will, and that can still be okay. Not everything has to get done. I love that, that's why I wanted to pull it into the room. But later on, rest assured, later on in the year, she tested this assumption again, this time giving a bit of support to others, and she found that things could still get done without her doing them herself. She also worked on other leadership competencies like deep listening and doing her pinch sorts. Through it all, you could see the intentionality and the reflectiveness in her work. And for these reasons, I think that your most exciting years as an educator is yet to come, Allison. Congratulations. If you want, you can go down this way. Congratulations again. Let me give you a hug. Okay. Second is Amber Tahani. Let's welcome her up onto the stage. Okay, so I'm going to be, oh, let me give you your degree first. Important. That's very important. Yes. Okay, so these uh, comments were prepared by one of her instructors, David Troutman, so I'm gonna be reading his words today. Amber is a fiercely mission-driven educator who works tirelessly to co-conspire innovative learning models that truly center students' well-being. She began her capstone focused on embedding mindfulness in classroom practice, and through this developed her capacity to improve systems. 
Amber's deep reflectiveness clearly drove her leadership growth in the program. She leaned into the goals that she set, developing her fluency with conflict and risk, as well as sharing her leadership voice. She is recognized by her colleagues as someone who works tremendously hard for her students, perseverance and pivots in the face of adversity, and shows up with kindness and grace. Congrats, Amber. Big, big round of applause. Yes. I also had Amber in my course this year, and it was an absolute pleasure to have you. She actually stayed on for extra credits in our course, and I'm so glad that you did that. Congratulations. Okay, next on stage is gonna be Anna Claire Harrison. Welcome to the stage. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> yes, we did. Okay, these comments were prepared by Stacy Lopez and I'm gonna be reading her words. Anna has spent the last 30 years thinking about how to create physical spaces where people can thrive. As an educator who is deeply passionate about nature-based outdoor learning, Anna has recently turned her attention specifically to creating equitable learning environments for her children, for children. Her work lives beautifully at the intersection of social and environmental justice. Anna brings a keen attention to detail to her work always thinking about how to curate learning experiences for both adults and students alike, the epitome of personalized learning. In this program, Anna has learned how to, do, how to be the kind of leader who leads from behind, gently encouraging and supporting folks as they grow to become the kind of educators who center student voices and experiential learning. Thanks to Anna's work, a significant subset of students at Live Oak Elementary had access to nature-based outdoor learning, a practice that will have long-lasting impacts on the way they experience school. Congratulations, Anna. Your work is incredible. Let's give her a round of applause. Congratulations. So proud of you. Okay, the next graduate is actually not here. Uh, it's Cara Claire Harrison, but we're going to re I'm going to read her comments, and she is online tuning in today, so let's give her a round of applause as she is here. And these remarks were prepared by myself, so I'll be reading my own words here. Cara has a couple decades of experience as an educator under her belt. Uh, pun intended, because she's also the longtime proprietor of a martial arts school that she operates with her husband, Sergio. Running a family business, which I know from personal experience is not easy, so this speaks to the collaborative nature and spirit of Cara that I have come to know so well over the past 10 months. Cara has over a decade of teaching in Minnesota, and she has now taught in Columbia for almost the same amount of time, where she lives with her husband and children. This year, Cara decided to extend her master's experience by voluntarily continuing in the third offering of Examine Leadership, the course that I had the honor to co-teach. In this kind of course where you get as, it's the kind of course that you get as much out of it as you're willing to put in. And it has been absolutely inspiring to see the vulnerability and strength she has exhibited in taking the various experiences she has had this year and transforming them into deep insight and resiliency. Living an integrated life between who you are as a leader and your personal life, it was told to me, is something that shouldn't be partitioned. And I think that Cara is one of the best examples of this integrated kind of life. She had decided that she wanted to do some of the most courageous work this year, and, and that is creating the inventory of the self, making sense of it, drawing out maps of what's happening inside, and coming out a more resilient, self-aware, and courageous person. I am deeply proud of the work you have done this year, Cara, and I know that this upcoming year will be your most rewarding yet. Let's give her a round of applause. Okay, so the next graduate is also not here. It's Cara, um, sorry, Ginger Spickler, and I also prepared her comments today, and I have the honor of reading them. 
I still feel a great deal of gratitude to you for sharing so much of your learning with your exam and leadership class. For those of you in that class, you know what I'm talking about. Not just work that you prepared ahead of time, but for example, your willingness to do live coaching sessions with myself and Dr. Fadlallah on some of your most personal leadership work. After we had our fishbowl, Ali and I realized that we had never seen a moment in all of our leadership training where faculty and a student had enough trust to have such an experience. The learning opportunities you created for your classmates is something we can't begin to quantify. You encourage everyone to go beyond the surface level, and I would go as far to say that these moments you helped create were the turning point in our collective class going deeper and deeper. These qualities are one that will serve you well in your current and future leadership. Even your capstone work, focus on the bigger picture of a school, aligning the mission and vision with the specific goals that are enacted day to day, week to week, and month to month. As one of the co-founders of Crosstown High, revisiting the goals of the school with staff that were newer took a significant status treatment from you, but you accomplished this from the deep sense of listening that you have been working on as a leader. One of your reflections of this, truly, of this listening truly stayed with me. This is a quote. There are opportunities to listen deeply to people all the time. In both short and long interactions, I can practice presence and focused attention. The staff at Crosstown High are lucky to have you to be such an empathetic and caring leader. Congratulations, Ginger. Okay, our next graduate is actually here today. Please welcome Maria Shembri to the stage. Give her a big round of applause. Okay, so these are my comments from Maria. The work that you documented in your capstone and the work that you were, is the work that you were meant to lead, Maria. She's the head of a department of the, eight, of one of the eighth largest district in the nation where she focused her work to increase trans students' sense of belonging at school by providing access to inclusive facilities participating in GSAs, Gay Straight Alliances, and affirming events like Solidarity Week, experiencing inclusive texts and curriculum, and access to safety plans, such as gender support plans. When I listened to her end of the year presentation of learning on her capstone, I encourage her to reflect through her writings about the work she is doing, because I believe, and others here believe, that others should be reading and learning in the, about the work that you're leading at San Diego Unified. The work you led is historic and can be an exemplar for others in your position. Writing about these issues, especially in our current anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans climate across the country takes courage, but you have walked away, you have walked through the fire this year, and that makes you qualified to help others face the same as they do this vital work. We have so much to learn from you, Maria. Congratulations, and we're so proud of you. Okay. The next graduate is also not here. It is Melissa Wittek, and I'll be reading my comments for her as well. So let's give her a round of applause for Melissa. <laughs> Melissa is a teacher at Distant Academy for Progress and Enterprise, which is an alternative school that serves approximately 200 at-risk youth in grades six through 12 in Florida. The work she led for her capstone was just as significant as the work she delved into her own self-development and leadership this year. As they were intimately connected in immeasurable ways, her capstone work became about building increased trust between students and teachers at her school. In her capstone, she wrote, the days of cold rote education are over. Some of our students have said, have fun with us, end quote. Our students want to be seen for who they are and met where they are. In this project, they asked what, that we start more conversations, quote, have deep personal conversations and ask how they are doing. 
This is what the students wanted from their teachers. They want teachers who do not deny their humanity or the teacher's own humanity. What I thought was so profound in her capstone is that she realized that she had to have the same kind of trust with her colleagues to do this work. In her own words, she said, much pressure was removed from my shoulders when I realized that, I, that even though I was leading this project, I don't have to have all the answers. I have to let go of having all the control. I had to try things even when I wasn't sure of how or if they would work. It was freeing. I would not have learned much if I had not opened up to these possibilities. I would only have been confirming what I already knew. Congratulations, Melissa. Let's give her a round of applause. Okay, our next graduate is here today. I have the honor of introducing Oscar Fabian Carrion. Welcome him to the stage. Let's give him another round of applause. Okay, these are my comments that I prepared for Oscar as well. I have had the opportunity to go camping with you, play basketball countless times before the sunrise, and have you in my course. Through these experiences, I've learned that you are a generous, caring person. And also, there isn't a shot on the basketball court that you do not like. <laughs> you let it fly no matter where you are. But on a serious note, you have such a unique ability to invite in colleagues to do meaningful work in a way that does not feel threatening. The work that interests you is consistently about how can you create an environment that engenders a sense of belonging for your students. But you're not satisfied containing it to just your classroom, but you find creative avenues to raise consciousness with your colleagues. So for example, you created a PD in one of your classes to look at what it would take to de-emphasize grades by doing self-reflective work and asking teachers to think back about the feelings of being evaluated themselves by their supervisors and engaging in a Socratic conversation of a reading from the sometimes polarizing but nevertheless interesting Alfie Cohn. I had, I had the honor of also seeing your capstone work unfold, which you focus on utilizing advisory as a means to foster belonging for students at High Tech High Mesa. You implemented what you called obligated togetherness between upperclassmen and freshmen. <laughs> I love that. Your efforts led to significant increases in the sense of belonging in a freshman, in freshmen, but you came out of the work with more humility and understanding of the complexity of the work, stating in your capstone that I have learned through this project that increasing belongingness is not a streamlined process. It is much more complicated with multiple variables that I'm willing to dive deeper into and learn more about, end quote. That is your greatest strength, Oscar, your ability to invite others to do the work with you, work that has no easy answers, and to have the combination of humility of what you don't know and the desire to learn more. It has been an honor to have you in examine leadership. My favorite quote from your work in that class was, my truth, although inconvenient, does matter because it matters to me. Indeed it does, and I think it matters to a lot of people that are here today, Oscar. Congratulations, my brother. Okay, this is the last graduate that I have the honor of reading comments for. Let's all welcome Trisha Ibarra to the stage. Big round of applause. Okay, I'll be reading my comments for Trisha as well. It was a joy to be able to read through Trisha's capstone. One passage in particular slowed me down and I had to read it several times and I wanna read it to you right now. Connection, communication, and care are themes that have shown up in my work over and over again. 
whether it be in the adult communities or the student communities. We all are navigating through our shared spaces with miscommunication, missed opportunities for connection, and moments of care for ourselves and one another. Trisha brings in her ancestral practices of Kapwa, a Filipino philosophy of shared identity within our community. The notion that there is no self without the other. She has genuinely embodied this by taking everyone into consideration for transformational change, including students, staff, and just as importantly, herself, through her work of intentionally using her voice in leadership moments and examining and reinterpreting some of the assumptions that she once held about her voice in these critical moments. Her tradition of Kapwa, commitment to the arts, and to the voices of students has made Trisha into an extraordinary educator that we are all very, very proud of. Let's give a big round of applause for Trisha. Okay, now I will be welcoming my esteemed colleague, Dr. Michelle Pledger onto stage to read her comments of the other graduates today. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am super honored to be here today to just share in the celebration of this cohort. This cohort in particular is very special to me. I've actually never attended any other graduations <laughs> except for this one. <laughs> For real, this is being filmed, for real reasons of schedule conflicts. But no, I, um, but there was no way in the world that I was going to miss this one. So I'm excited for the group that I get to diplomatize today. And yes, I just invented that word. So I would like to welcome to the stage Amy V. Noble. Tina Schuster prepared this reflection for Amy. Amy is a lifelong educator who started her career as an elementary teacher. For the past several years, she has been an innovative coach supporting teachers who are implementing project-based learning. Amy's capstone research focused on implementing and refining high leverage coaching strategies in the Hopewell, Virginia School District that would lead to more deeper learning experiences for students. Over the course of this master's program, I have watched Amy grow in her vulnerability as a coach, and I have seen the direct impact of her leadership in coaching with the teachers she has worked with. They feel supported and pushed in a good way by her coaching. Implementing project-based learning and deeper learning can be challenging for teachers no matter how many years they have spent in the classroom. Amy's support of her team has led to more enhanced experiences of deeper learning for the students in the classrooms. Congratulations, Amy. Please welcome to the stage, Amy Maria Evans. This comment was prepared by Nikki Hinostro. Amy, driven by her unwavering commitment to excellence, embarked on an inspiring journey to uplift the school climate and ensure that all of Hopewell's young people have committed and high quality teachers. With unwavering enthusiasm and dedication, Amy showcases the spirit of entrepreneurship within the school community by igniting a spark of innovation and collaboration. She believes in the power of affirmations as a daily ritual, infusing the air with positivity and nurturing a truly supportive atmosphere. In the coming year, Amy is committed to creating affinity spaces that foster genuine understanding and empathy, integrating the five love languages to build stronger connections and appreciation among the educators, and organizing a calendar that includes off-campus activities to build camaraderie and connection amongst staff. I have great trust that through her continued efforts and positive force, she will cultivate a vibrant, inclusive, and tightly knit school community where students and staff can flourish, not only academically and professionally, but also socially and emotionally, ultimately transforming the educational landscape for the better.
please welcome to the stage Rebecca Jones Redling. Becky is a lifelong educator committed to centering students and supporting a team of teachers currently as an instructional coach. Through her research over the past couple of years, she did a deep dive into coaching strategies that can support a team of teachers that face challenges in collaboration. Becky worked with individual teachers to hear their needs and collectively work with them as a leader to develop healthy team collaboration structures and habits. She sought out mentorship and training and was open to trying new strategies in the team meetings that led to shared leadership on the team. In addition to creating different team structures, she also centered the human connection, making sure that everyone felt more joy in and out of school. Thank you for your dedication to this work and your fortitude in rebuilding and repairing relationships with teachers in the Hopewell School District. Tina Schuster. Please welcome to the stage, Brenna Fair Ralston. This comment was prepared by Nikki Inostro. Brenna fearlessly embarked on the formidable mission of transforming the school culture, focusing her efforts on the most perplexing developmental phase, seventh grade. <laughs> With unwavering dedication and a touch of humor, she took a deep dive into the intricacies of this identity crisis, recognizing that student-teacher relationships were at the very heart of a thriving educational environment. Brenna guided the seventh grade teaching team in building meaningful connections with their students through deep empathy work to understand their unique perspectives and aspirations. In addition, Brenna and her team skillfully infused a sense of play into their interactions, using wit, games, and playful banter to create a relaxed and engaging atmosphere. Through her empathy, patience, genuine care, and clever humor, Brenna inspired trust and created a safe space where students felt heard, valued, and understood. As a result of her work in leadership, her students felt a shift in culture toward one of mutual respect, collaboration, and a genuine love for learning. Brenna's commitment to improving student-teacher relationships and her ability to infuse joy and play into her teaching became the catalyst for a profound transformation, leaving a profound mark on the lives of her students and her school that has the potential to impact the entire community. Congratulations. Please welcome to the stage, Brock McColgan Parker. Brock is an educator who wears many hats in the Hopewell School District. He attended Hopewell School as a student, and he is currently a coach, a teacher, and leader of the high school student leadership group. Although his graduate school research focused on teacher retention and professional development, it is evident that all of his work is in service of improving student experience. His connection with both students and teachers at Hopewell High School is the foundation of his strong leadership. Through his research, Brock explored an approach to professional development called Genius in the Room. Through this strategy, he flattened some of the structures in the school to invite teachers to lead professional development experiences based on their strengths in the classroom. This led to teachers feeling valued and empowered. Thank you, Brock, for you, your humility, levity, and empathy through which you approach all of your work as an educator. And congratulations, Tina Schuster. Please welcome to the stage, Cherie Wiley. This reflection was prepared by Nikki Inostro. Cherie has emerged as an unwavering leader in her district with unapologetic determination. She drives the pursuit of equity, igniting transformative change in her community where the painful history of systemic dehumanization continues to impact this community, nestled just outside of Richmond, Virginia. Confronting entrenched systems and beliefs, Cherie understands that the path to collective liberation is paved with countless small steps, each a testament to her unwavering commitment to justice. Cherie persists 
inspiring us to embrace our own unapologetic determination, engaging collective power within her community so that students and staff might know better, do better, and create a better future for us all. Nikki Hinostro. Please welcome to the stage, Courtney Covington Street. <laughs> Courtney, an embodiment of dedication and compassion, radiates the spirit of a true servant leader. Through her attentive and active leadership, she weaves deeper learning and community mobilization for our youngest learners in Hopewell, Virginia. Courtney passionately seeks opportunities to uplift and empower those around her, recognizing that authentic leadership lies in nurturing growth and unleashing untapped potential. In early childhood education, she understands that deeper learning is about creating experiences that allow children to engage with the world around them in a meaningful way. Courtney skillfully co-designs with colleagues so that children are able to make connections between what they already know and what they're learning, fostering a love of learning and a sense of pride in their developing identity. By organizing her community in a shared vision for deeper learning, she amplified access to early education, deeper, le deeper learning resources, centering inclusivity and weaving meaningful connections. Courtney's brilliant leadership illuminates a path towards a future where the youngest learners blossom into their fullest selves, embraced by loving community. Nikki Inostro. John Johnson III is not in attendance physically, but he is on the live stream, so we are going to share the comments that Tina Schuster prepared for John. John has been a leader in the Hopewell High School Social Studies Department and on the staff for many years. He saw a need to examine teacher retention as he spoke with district leadership and personally saw the struggles newer teachers face. Through his research, he did empathy work with teachers that are new to the district and often new to the teaching profession. He listened to what they were asking for, and he developed strategies that may require low effort to implement, but will have high impact on teacher happiness and retention in the Hopewell School District. John's commitment to mentoring teachers is clear in any conversation with him, and although his research was wrapped up this year, I know he will continue this work in service of the district. Congratulations, John. Tina Schuster. Let's give John a Please welcome to the stage, Mary Wolfrey Hoke. <laughs> this reflection was prepared by Tina Schuster. Before Mary became a science educator, she was a plankton biologist and even worked in Antarctica for a summer, which was very cold. After her time as a researcher, Mary taught physics at High Tech High for three years before moving back to her home state of Virginia. In Virginia, she was a classroom teacher before stepping into a role as an innovation coach in the Hopewell School District. Through her research, Mary studied teacher collaboration and peer coaching as a way to increase deeper experiences for students. Through th this exploration, she democratized some of the structures of professional learning with her team, which led to shared ownership of a lot of the growth among team members. Mary's approach to leadership is one of non-judgmental curiosity. She listens thoughtfully as a coach, and her joy is obvious when working with students. Thank you for all your work these past 18 months, and congratulations, Mary. Tina Schuster. She's unimpressed by me. That's okay. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Rashima Denise Stepney. This reflection was prepared by Tina Schuster. Before Rashima stepped into the classroom, she was a producer for a news network living that fast-paced life of the media. This background has helped Rashima become the thoughtful and collaborative educator that she is. She reflects on her own work, always striving for excellence, seeks out mentorship and feedback, and supports her students while doing everything she can with a smile. 
Over the 18-month program, Rashima has stepped out of her comfort zone and bravely expanded her role as a real teacher leader among her department and the cohort of teachers she works with in crew at Hopewell. Through her research, Rashima has implemented strategies to improve student voice and choice within the English department at her high school. She always, always, always centers students in all she does and is open to learning from them and with them. Rashima has aspirations to move into an innovation coach or other coaching role, and we know when she does that she will bring her full heart and dedication into that work as a leader. It has been such a joy to work with you this year. Congratulations, Rashima. Tina Schuster. Please welcome to the stage Sarah Elizabeth Miller. This reflection was prepared by Dr. Mark Caban. Sarah, I had the privilege of visiting your classroom in Hopewell twice during your time with the GSE, and it was incredible to see the relationships you created with your students. Your classroom is welcoming with various lighting and comfortable seating, but it is more than that. It is about the excitement for the learning experience. You created ways for kids to collaborate, compete, contribute, and feel successful. There was not one student who didn't have their hand held high. Bottom line, it was a classroom everyone wanted to be in, including myself. You also decided to take on the most pressing problem we are facing for teachers, that is burnout and turnover. You chose to do something about the number one stressor for principals across the country. That shows what kind of person you are. You wrote in your capstone, I was surprised at how willing my own peers, who are also mentors, were to help me out and also step out of their comfort zones when we were working on one-on-one -on -one conversations, as well as meet with me when it was not required of them. I was also surprised at how much joy I got from leading others and using data to drive my next steps. I know that I do this in my teaching practice, but I have never done it purposefully when working with adults. I found that I really enjoy helping adults and I get great satisfaction when they reflect and see improvements in themselves. I'm not surprised at all by your ability to bring people in and galvanize them to work towards difficult and important goals, but I am excited to see what other surprises are in store for your work ahead. Dr. Mark Cavani. And our last one for this section is not here with us, but she is on the live stream. So let's give a round of applause for Summer Victoria Jones. I would like to welcome her father to the stage who will be accepting her diploma on her behalf. This comment was prepared by Nikki Hinostro. Summer is all about love. In her work at Hopewell City Public Schools in Virginia, she has illuminated the profound significance of creating inclusive, nurturing spaces where love, empathy, and dialogue flourish. In these sacred learning communities, students are cherished beings whose voices and experiences are valued. It is through the transformative power of love and critical thinking that students find solace, empowerment, and a true sense of belonging, transcending the confinements of societal norms and oppressive systems. Summer, her colleagues, and students alike have embarked on a shared path of growth, liberation, and self-discovery, where the harmony of diverse voices and perspective creates a symphony of understanding and connection. Education at its core is a sacred art that calls us to nurture the souls of our students, embracing their uniqueness and guiding them toward a brighter future filled with love, compassion, and authentic belonging. Infused with boundless love, Summer's presence is a gift, radiating soulful energy that uplifts us all. Nikki Inostro. And now I'd like to welcome to the stage my esteemed, cherished, brilliant, and beautiful colleague, Melissa Daniels. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? When I spoke at my own high school graduation, 
after I gave my speech, I learned that the microphone was off <laughs> and that no one in this big football stadium heard anything that I had to say. So I just want to make sure you can hear me. Um, but I know that with Gabe Ogilvie's team running audio, we should have nothing to worry about. So um, my name is Melissa Daniels. and. I have the privilege of introducing and celebrating the seven leadership residents who have spent the year in San Diego learning alongside district and school leaders. Um, and I would like to first welcome up to the stage, Grace Evans. Grace is a tenacious and passionate supporter of math education for all. She made the cross-country trek with a U-Haul trailer to participate in the 10-month residency program and joined the Escondido High School District to support their math reform efforts. Over the course of the year, she worked with high school teachers interested in testing ideas to increase the number of students willing to participate in mathematical discourse in their classrooms. Using inquiry cycles from the continuous improvement process, Grace and her team of teachers were able to increase student participation in classroom discussions from 20% to 77% over a few short weeks. We wish Grace all the best in her future math reform endeavors and a safe trip back to loved ones and the furry four-legged best friend who is eagerly waiting for her across the country. Congratulations, Grace. Next, next, I'd like to welcome to the stage, Lauren Kozowski. <laughs> this comment was prepared by Katie Weisberg. Lauren joined our community after moving all the way across the country and brought with her a huge smile and an unfaltering spirit of warmth, curiosity, kindness, and passion. Lauren joined the community at High Tech Middle North County in the fall as a leadership resident and immediately dove in to support the students and families at her site. She led professional learning in the area of trauma-informed practice for the staff, and she co-designed an improved approach to the student success team work to ensure that struggling students were identified and provided with the individualized support that they needed. Her SST work is now being adopted by other sites at the High Tech High Network. At the midpoint of the year, Lauren stepped in as a long-term substitute for an eighth grade math science class and became a beloved facilitator of deeper learning experiences for her students. There is little that Lauren cannot do, and we know that she will continue to bring her spirit of positivity and resilience, along with her deep knowledge and experience in social emotional learning and student-centered practice to the High Tech High community. Congratulations, Lauren. Next up, I'd like to invite Nancy Hernandez Faria. <laughs> this comment was prepared by Britt Perro. With a loving smile and optimistic attitude, Nancy has been an amazing colleague and thought partner in the Emerging Multilingual Learning Continuous Improvement Group. Her commitment to understanding the unique needs of emerging multilingual learners, her school's teachers, and her BIA, bilingual instructional assistant, colleagues has been an inspiration to us all. Nancy goes above and beyond to seek feedback from others and to make sure she implements that feedback to make her work the strongest it can be. Congratulations, Nancy. We eagerly anticipate the positive impact you will continue to make in the lives of your students and the broader community.
I'd like to welcome up Shakila Mohammed. This comment was prepared by Kaylee Frederick. Shakila leads with heart first and foremost. She approaches obstacles with an openness and determined stance that inspires those around her to lend support. Her quest to elevate young learners' voices to the forefront of school decisions took creative approaches that ultimately built trust and a community amongst students that is cherished. She brings joy to learning spaces that she enters. Shakila creates a lasting impression with her smile and gentle nudges to encourage others to think of the learners first and foremost. Congratulations. I'd like to welcome to the stage Tracy Hayward. This comment was prepared by Garrett Brownlee Plants. Tracy shows up with innate curiosity and commitment for educational excellence and equity in every interaction she holds. Her ability to see the system and hold the uniqueness of each individual young person is a gift to the field and those on her team. She brings her whole self in every interaction and feeling the gift of her attention, presence, and curiosity. Her leadership in this program and as a student was a joy to work with and we are all very excited for anyone who gets to partner with her. And I would like to just add one thing, that Tracy has been a beloved member of the resident cohort and has made this group feel like a family. Congratulations, Tracy. Next, I would like to invite to the stage Vanessa Savala. This comment was prepared by Britt Perro. Vanessa has been an absolute joy to work with this year as a colleague and thought partner in the Emerging Multilingual Learning Con Continuous Improvement Group. Her unwavering dedication and passion for empowering students with language skills that transcend past the language arts, arts classroom has made such a huge impact on the High Tech Elementary North County community. Her project helped her identify a real need to the area of math development and her diligent focus and her PDSA, PDSA cycles helped create awesome success. Congratulations, Vanessa. We eagerly anticipate the positive impact you will continue to make in the lives of your students and the broader community. Congratulations. And finally, I would love to welcome to the stage Yusuf Young. Savor it, savor it. <laughs> Yusuf is a deeply engaged educator. His commitment to building complex understandings of school communities and to supporting those students most deeply affected by systemic oppression is impactful and difficult as this work remains inspires us with critical hope for a more just future for all students. Through his research, Yusuf unpacked the why behind school violence and brought awareness to the inequitable policies, practices, and approaches that impacted students of color in Escondido Union High School District. His advocacy for deeper learning, for deeper teacher-student relationships to combat inequities is profound. Yusuf is a supportive, steadfast colleague and mentor for his fellow grads. Yusuf shows up in all of the meanings of that term. 
Yusuf, the love and deep commitment you bring to your work has powerful positive impacts for students that will sustain them through their lives. Congratulations, Yusuf, and thank you for all that you bring to this community and to your work. And now I will welcome to the stage my friend and colleague, Katie Weisberg. Good afternoon, folks. We're at the final stretch. How are we holding up out there? <laughs> last, last stretch. We saved the best for last for you. I'm Katie Weisberg, and it's my honor to first welcome to the stage Amanda Michelle Sowell. Amanda joined our community as a teacher at the Learning Choice Academy in San Diego. She approaches her work and learning with endless curiosity and is a type of student who is always engaged, grappling, wondering, and applying her learning. Amanda took on an ambitious leadership challenge for her master's capstone, focusing on the important work of increasing teachers' sense of belonging within their adult learning community. She led professional learning and facilitated team meetings and achieved impressive results that indicate significantly increased connection, relationships, and belonging for teachers at her site. Amanda was flexible and adaptable throughout her research process, pivoting and iterating as she learned. Amanda has truly evolved into the role of a capable leader for her learning community, and we eagerly await her next moves. Congratulations, Amanda. A.T. Faruya is up next. These comments were prepared by Renee, AT's capstone advisor. AT's research centers student voices, fostering equitable engagement through increasing student sense of belonging within school communities and building student sense of themselves as agents of change and leaders of their own liberation. AT, you have an impressive mind that makes connections across disciplines and environments, and you brought a sharp eye, a generous heart, and so much, so much warmth to the group's work this year. You inspire us with your energy and that tremendous capacity for hope that results in your unwavering commitment to transformative justice. You have an ability to learn as much from what doesn't work as from what does. You are a joy to work and learn with, and we are so grateful that you have joined us for this portion of your learning journey. Congrats on your completing your master's degree today. Next up is Claire. I believe Claire is participating remotely, is that correct? Claire is joining us remotely on the live stream, and these comments were prepared by her capstone improvement coach, Renee. Claire has a deep love to empower teachers and students to connect with their communities. She has a beautiful vision of uniting educators to leverage the power of students' voices and freedom of choice to create a generation of change makers. Claire has been an advocate for shifting institutional power dynamics in school spaces and seeking ways to create more democratized and liberated spaces. Throughout this program, she has persisted in this vision for education. We are proud to congratulate her on all of the contributions that she has made in her community. Congrats to Claire. I'd like to welcome Eileen Marie Finnegan to the stage. These comments were also prepared by Renee for you. Eileen has been a fearless and dedicated leader towards liberated spaces for the young people she serves at Prep Academy. Eileen has shown an unwavering commitment to inspire others to cultivate more authentic engagement and to lift up healing-centered practices. 
It has been an honor to watch Eileen advocate for the young people in her spaces and to witness the dynamic and inspirational changes that she is making in her community. Congratulations, Eileen. Jordan Sipes, you are next. These comments were written by Jordan's improvement coach, Stacy Callier. <laughs> Jordan and his trusty teammates, Molly and Tara, have been on a mission this year to improve college access at their school and to support more first-generation students to feel like college is for them. They've leaned in and listened to students creating an innovative peer mentoring program in their advisories where sophomores were able to connect with seniors about their dreams and hopes for their futures. And they've paved the way for more cross-grade collaboration in the future. Their team's work is a beautiful example of working within existing structures like advisory to create meaningful change for students. And Jordan brought his sense of humor, eagerness to learn, and love of pie to make their team's work a success. <laughs> Congratulations, Jordan. Lauren Olivia Luca, you are next. These comments are prepared by Lauren's capstone coach, Garrett. Lauren joined our community as a fourth grade teacher at Crest School in San Diego. As a teacher who was earlier in her career, Lauren approached her entry into our program with endless curiosity and quickly began to find her voice and step into her role as an emerging teacher leader at her site. Lauren focused her capstone work on increasing teacher confidence to lead and facilitate outdoor learning experiences with students. Her love for designing and getting students in the real world exploring is truly contagious. Thank you for creating environments where students can tap into nature and make learning come alive. Congratulations. Next up is Molly Poole. These comments were also prepared by Stacy. <laughs> Molly, another member of the improvement team working on college access at the Jacobs High Tech High with her buds Jordan and Tara, has a deep belief in the power of students to design meaningful solutions. For the peer mentoring program their team developed, Molly drew on her knowledge of her seniors' interests and strengths to meaningfully pair them with sophomores and to elicit their ideas about how to make the program more powerful. She is reflective, humble, eager to try new things, and always looking for opportunities to grow in her leadership practice. Congratulations, Molly. Ronella Lene Moore is up next. Ronnie. <laughs> These comments were prepared by Renee, your improvement coach for your capstone. Ronnie's eagerness to learn and to transform education is truly inspirational. Her work this year centered student learning and experience, investigating the nature of student engagement in mathematics. Ronnie's overarching conclusion that we simply must attend a student engagement for all that it can teach us about students, ourselves, and education has the power of truth. Ronnie's approach to teaching and learning is deeply empathetic, and she draws upon a powerful capacity for connecting with students, colleagues, and students and colleagues in the building to create impactful relationships of trust. Her fellow students know her as a deeply reflective, warm, and supportive thought partner and a tireless worker for positive change. Ronnie, you are an educator to the core. Your warmth and commitment and your beautiful vision for students and educators learning together will surely support, encourage, and sustain those around you. It has been an honor to work and learn with you this year. Congratulations.
Sean Michael Tipton Gilly, AKA Gilly. Sean's improvement coach, Kaylee, wrote these. <laughs> Sean approaches conversations and challenges with genuine interest and concern. In his journey to understanding deeply young people and their stories, he found ways to truly connect and elevate student voice in his context. And through his anecdotes, he inspired us to listen more intently to what young people share and what they do not share, which are equally important. His enthusiasm to shift power dynamics in schools by simply inviting young people into the conversation is a small step towards massive change. Thank you for pushing to elevate students to the forefront even when you were faced with obstacles. And thank you for always making us laugh and being this, a spirit of so much joy in our group. We are excited to see the conditions you create for young people in your next adventure. Congratulations, Gilly. <laughs> Suzanne Maria Erlegan is uh, joining us in the, live in the live stream. So this is for Susie, written by Garrett. <laughs> Susie is a beloved member of our learning community who consistently shows up as her authentic self. She brings humor, passion, and realness wherever she goes. Susie focused her capstone work on increasing student belonging through leading restorative circles. She listened deeply to her students, partnering with them to understand their needs, their hopes, and their experiences at school, and allowing their voices to guide her process. Her students quickly adopted the routine of circling up and connecting, and Susie found through her research this had an impressive impact on students reporting that they felt safe to share their thoughts and opinions in class. Susie navigated this project during her first year at a new school, and she worked hard to build relationships and deeply understand and respond to her new context. Susie's students are fortunate to have a champion who centers their experiences, and we know she will continue to do incredible work for young people. Congratulations, Susie. <laughs> Next to the stage, I'd like to welcome Tara Samuels. as a fan club. These were prepared by Stacy Callier. Tara is the last but not least member of the college access improvement teams at Jacobs High Tech High. If Jordan brought the humor and the pie and Molly brought the let's do it attitude, Tara was always ready to turn whatever feedback they'd received from students into a beautiful graph to guide their next steps as a team or to capture whatever ideas they were having into a graphic organizer that they could provide to students that week. She has the ability to ask a question, generate an idea, and move to action quickly, and she makes things happen. Together, these three modeled what it means to be a high-functioning team rooted in a common purpose in service of students. And they are just crazy enough to be already enrolled in a second master's program, followed on math pedagogy. Woo -woo. I can't wait to see where their future will take them and what we will learn from them. Congratulations. Taya Chase. <laughs> These comments were prepared by your improvement coach, Daisy. Taya is a thoughtful and formidable math leader at her school. She loves an outdoor challenge. In fact, her license plate is MTM, or Mountain Bear. So maybe that's why she chose not to focus on one, but two common challenges facing math educators. The twin problems of increasing student sense of belonging in math and increasing their mathematical proficiency. Taya looped in her math colleagues and together they tested change ideas to build students' mathematical identities and their mathematical understanding, and they were successful. By collaborating together and with their students, they were able to boost students' mathematical understanding and achievement, as well as their perceptions of themselves as capable mathematicians, a confidence boost that will serve them well as they pursue their, pursue their goals in higher education. Congratulations, Taya. <laughs> And finally, Jennifer Rebecca Martin Getty, AKA Jen. Oh, 
I don't have your comments. <laughs> Hang on. Brittany? Can you put them up on your phone really fast for me and I'll, and I'll stall? We have, we have them in a spreadsheet, don't worry. <laughs> Oh, I gave them to someone else. <laughs> Who'd I give them to? <laughs> JK, I got them. Okay. Crisis averted. Thank you, Taya. This was prepared for you by Daisy. Sorry, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer is a reflective and brave educational leader. From engaging in the program launch group camping trip to her success in increasing fifth grade students' mathematical self-efficacy as a prior humanities teacher, she demonstrated a willingness to step out of her comfort zone and learn alongside others. We were struck by the insights Jen shared in her final presentation of learning this year about her own equity journey and want to celebrate her willingness to be vulnerable and to connect with others. These are both skills of great leaders. Her thoughtfulness and ability to genuinely connect with others has earned her the fierce affection of the fifth grade teachers she works with and the support of her program colleagues. We wish you all the best in your future plans and congratulations, Jennifer. And now in the tradition of the High Tech High Graduate School of Education, we're going to have an open mic. And what this means is that anyone who feels compelled to speak is welcome to line up over here to my left. And the mic will be open for the next 15 or so minutes. This can include graduates, this can include family members, friends, community members, whoever, anyone who's in the room who has something on their heart that they would like to share as we celebrate the accomplishments of this incredible group here today. So again, if you line up on the stage, it'll make it a little bit more expeditious as folks filter in to speak. And we'll hold it open for about 15 or so minutes. Who's our first brave speaker? Uh -oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna duke it, okay, Amy's gonna go first. Good afternoon, everyone. So as you can see, this program works, and I loved it because I'm the um, introvert, and I volunteered to be first. <laughs> um, but I just wanna say thank you to the instructors. You all are amazing. Um, when I first heard about this program through our district in Virginia, people kind of discouraged me. They were like, you, you know, you're teaching, you're doing this, you're doing that, you don't have time. Um, and I had to just kind of learn not to listen to everyone else's voice and just listen to my own voice. And I do not regret one decision that I made doing this program. Um, I've met some amazing people. Hope well, you rock. <laughs> I mean, because there are people, right, like Sarah and Brenna in the same building. We got to know each other much better. The high school, the elementary school, we just became um, a big family. And I know Summer is watching. Um, Summer, we love you. We wish you could be here with us. We love you. So thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> Come on, y'all knew I was. <laughs> I'm doing this because my son, he sent me a text and he was saying that, um, Dad, you didn't thank us in this. So, Joseph, <laughs> Ernesta Young, thank you. Isabella Zora Young, thank you. I wish you could be here with me. Um, about 20, 30 years ago, me and my brothers, we had a chance to go to Oxford, Ohio and um, see my mother get her doctorate degree, right? And I was a little boy and um, I was excited. I was boosted. And um, we all sat around taking pictures. And when we did that, I didn't know the impact it would have on my life. Didn't know it at the time, because I was maybe nine or 10. Um, and I went to school saying words like dissertation <laughs> to impress my friends. <laughs> Didn't know what it meant, but I knew it was a big word that my mom was using and she was studying. And she went on to be the uh, Dean of Education at Indiana University. And the irony was that when I went to Indiana University, I told her I don't want to teach. <laughs> I don't. I, um, I applied to the School of Public Affairs. I was trying to run away from it. And then uh, I called her up and said, I'm going to the Graduate School of Education in San Diego, full circle. So um, I say thank you, mother. Um, 
you always tell us don't forget to pray. And sometimes uh, I think as educators or just folks in this space, we get so overwhelmed with different things that we, uh, we forget about our spirituality. We forget about some people who uh, bless us along the way. And um, you always told me don't forget to pray. So thank you. Um, my brothers who travel all across the country, I love y'all. There's <laughs> seven of us in here. And, um, Thank you for being an example for me. I say this, I wanted to take the mic because uh, I have to say this in front of people. Um, I love you, thank you for uh, just pushing. I'm gonna keep talking because my children are on there and Bella Joe, I love you big time. Daddy's coming home and we are gonna party again. Peace. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, my name is Kellen Hayward. And I'm here celebrating the graduation of my lovely wife, Tracy Hayward. And the reason I'm up here is because I attended the um, bonfire last night out on the beach. And I got to meet Ronnie and Mark and Brittany. And Britt was sending all kinds of signals that there's going to be this open mic. And she says, how many family members you got with you? And I was like, there's about 10 of us. Well, out of 10 of you, one of you has got to get up and do something. And I said, well, it's going to have to be me, you know what I mean? Because as you've all said, and I think Mark, thank you for the words you shared. In just about two minutes of meeting Mark, these are some of the things he had to say about my wife. He says, man, your wife is a force of nature. He said, there's just about nothing she can't do. He says, you provide or give her a task to do, jobs, etc. she gets it done. He says, everybody loves her. And he says, you know what? And I don't know if he was hinting, but he says, if she wants to work, you know, or get a job here, you know, doing stuff at high tech, one of those, she could do it. Uh, no. <laughs> if you don't mind, we'll be taking her back with us when we go. You know, but I said, you know, I wish I had known more to, about the open mic sooner. As I said, I, I would have prepared a bit more to say, et cetera, because of you know, just the overwhelming gratitude I feel having been here and learning from all of you. Congratulations, congratulations to all of you graduates because I now have a better sense of what equitable education looks like and feels like. And so a couple of thank yous. First and foremost, a thank you to God because those of you that know Tracy know she's a woman of faith and without God, that force of nature, that person everybody loves doesn't exist. I would also like to thank High Tech, High Graduate School of Education for providing the environment in which my wife could come and she could learn, she could grow, and she could thrive. I also want to thank my family. You know, we're from Bermuda, so we've come quite a ways. So if they could just stand quickly. Thank you so much for coming and supporting. You know, and last but not least, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife. Not only, for, not only for this adventure that we've been on, but for following God's lead, for following your heart and your dreams, and for her why. And what am I talking about? In business, they always talk about, you know what? Hiring people who do things very well used to be the focus. But then businesses began to realize that if you can find people whose reason for doing what they do aligns with your business, you're far better off. Their why. And my wife's why has always and forever been her students, her love and her care of her students. And so she came all this way to work this hard because she wants to make sure that she can be a part of what we call back home in Bermuda the transformation of our public education system. And so Trace, I say to you on behalf of the thousands of Bermuda public school students whose lives you have touched, whose lives you will continue to touch, thank you. Not only for choosing to be a part of a much needed transformation of our public education system, but for positioning yourself to now lead in that transformation. Thank you. Hello, everybody. 
Uh, I'm gonna keep this one short. I just wanted to say congratulations to my stepmom, Maria. This great accomplishment. And congratulations to everyone here on graduating. And thank you everybody for those great speeches and thank you for letting me learn about each and every one of you today. Really enlightening experience, so thank you all. Everybody, I am so nervous up here, but I just could not resist another moment to embarrass my roommate, Tara Samuel. She's right here, right there, everybody. I was the annoying girl yelling in the back, but I just wanted to say that I witnessed firsthand the dedication and the time that Tara put into this that she didn't have while teaching full time. I could never, ever do that, and I know that you all put in the same dedication. So I know this night is full of congratulations and applause, but I just wanted to give you one more moment and also embarrass Tara. So congratulations, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm from the Hopewell group. I just wanted to um, shout out to my mom. It's been a really hard past couple months for us. Her mom passed away um, a couple months ago, and she was an amazing leader in Hopewell, and to see my mom following in her footsteps to be changing the community that we all grew up in is just really amazing, and I love you, and you're just such an inspiration to me. I love you. Hi, everyone. My name is Nabil Kanwala. I'm here celebrating my beautiful wife, Amber Danani, today. Amber, please stand up. Amber has put her blood, sweat, and tears into this program and into the work that she does day in and day out at The Gathering Place in San Antonio. The Gathering Place is an, incredib an incredibly innovative charter school that was founded by uh, two alumni, actually, of the High Tech High New School Fellowship. Um, at The Gathering Place, Amber has been instrumental in developing, developing the school. The school was just founded a few years ago. Um, Amber was on the founding team of teachers, and um, you know one of the one of the cool things that Amber did as a teacher was she designed three very unique projects in her first year at the Gathering Place. Um, this is a first year teacher at a school that is teaching people what project based learning is. One of those projects was building a uh, a, a free little, you know, one of those little libraries to put up a free little pantry outside of her school that served the community. In another project, she designed, uh, she, her students designed a, um, a, water, uh, a water conservation system. So they put up gutters on the school building and uh, that flows into a rainwater collection barrel and students and teachers across the campus use it to water plants on campus um, and put it in the classrooms. Um, when I saw her do that kind of work, I knew that Amber was going to change the world. She was going to change education as we know it. Um, and I've, you know, I haven't been in the classes, but I've basically been in the classes because <laughs> she's doing them from our living room. <laughs> and um, I've heard a lot of very intelligent, very passionate people sharing their ideas, sharing their thoughts. Um, and you know some of the stuff that was being shared in those classes, I was sitting there going like, how do people come up with this stuff, right? <laughs> like, these are people that are changing the future. These are people that are going to be impacting this next generation that we're passing on the world to, and I couldn't be more excited for what they have to offer. Um, again, Amber, I'm so incredibly proud of you. Um, you're an inspiration to me, and I hope that I can be, even half as hardworking as you are for the rest of my life. So thank you. Adam, Adam, come up here. Thomasina, come up here. Yes. We're not gonna sing. <laughs> First of all, um, all praise is due to God. Just want to start with that, first and foremost. Yousef, come, come up here, please. Yeah. Yousef, come here, please. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on up here. Come on. 
pulling up. I know time is almost up. I, I made a bet with one of my professors that I'm not going to ugly cry, and if I don't, let it out. Let it out. Okay. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Embrace let it. it. Out. Embrace let it out, it. man. We all been through a lot together. <laughs> um, I felt absolutely compelled to come up here with you all because we share so much love together. And this program, you just feel so much love. And I get goosebumps all the time from moments that matter, you know. And uh, from the very start of this program, all the things that you all have accomplished and, and do and, and are dreaming and, and helping, and, and it's just amazing. And um, I just want to say thank you for putting together such a, a wonderful program. And uh, man, it's, uh, it's beautiful to, to, to witness the amount of love in the program and that all of you all embody, you know. And um, just thankful for the, for the moment to to be able to witness that, so. Don't go just yet. Now we all up here, we all up here as siblings. We all up here as siblings and our mother is sitting there. Our children are sitting there. Children are watching. Bella and Joe, we all love y'all. I just wanna say as a younger sibling, along with my sister here, we've always looked up to big bros. Always admired what you all are doing, being lifelong learners as you all sit in front of us right now, but just the inspiration that you're providing us and providing the next in line, as Sister Marty Saul said earlier, who are you going to bring with you? You're bringing us with you, bro. We love the commitment that you did to do this, the sacrifice that you've made, and just thank you for continuing to push us to be great. So we know we're far from perfect, but we want to continue to be better. So thank y'all. Love y'all. Yes. Love you. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to say something for this wonderful group of leaders, the teachers, the educators. You don't know how you inspire so many people. I've seen Ronella work hard every day without complaints. And I know it's hard, the struggle is hard. And the respect that I have for you all Thank you for giving the next generation the opportunity to say, if you can't do it, you should, it's your, it's your duty. Thank you, everybody. I just want to thank my mom because she's working really hard and I love her and she really deserves this. I wanted to say that my mom's worked really hard on this program and that I can't <laughs> <laughs> that I've seen how hard she's tried and that she does deserve this master's degree. <laughs> my name is Finn and I really love my mom and her baby dope this. Wow, as an educator, um, you all really inspire me. I'm a retired school teacher, pastored for 40 years. Um, and yeah. uh, Summer fulfilled her mother's 
dream of her receiving um, her master's degree. Um, she died in 2020, and one of Summer's dreams uh, was for her mom to see her achieve what she achieved. But I believe she's looking down. I believe heaven is real. And I like to say this in honor of my late wife and for Summer. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one to walk with me than merely show the way. For the eye is a better pupil, more willing than the ear. Good counsel is confusing, but example is always clear. And most of all, the ministers, the teachers, the educators are the ones that should live their creed. For to see good put in action is what everyone needs. I could soon learn how to do it if you would let me see it done. The lecture you deliver may be very fine and true, but I'd rather learn my lesson by observing what you do. For the, I may misunderstand you and the high advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding in how you act and how you live. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, first off, congrats to all of you guys. I'm here basically to speak for my sister, who I am very thankful, Nancy. Um, our family is kind of split across countries, so the majority of our family is in Mexico, but we are here in the U.S. trying to push and create more for our family, right? She has always been my role model. She has been like my second mother, and she has just pushed me to strive for greatness, and without her, I feel like I could have not accomplished anything. I am not someone who likes speaking out as much, but she has been my connection. She has been the extroverted, the extrovert in my family who has pushed me to do better and push myself every day. So for that, I thank you. Um, hi, everyone. First, I'd like to congratulate you all. A great job. Um, and I'd like to congratulate my mom, especially. I see how hard she works every day for her students and for um, her kids and for this uh, master's degree. And um, I love you, Mom. Congratulations, everybody. Um, especially, excuse me, um, to my sister Amanda. <laughs> no, I'm not going to cry this time. Um, so, um, I want to say it was probably, I don't know, Amanda might have been 10 years old, driving down the 52, past the dump, <laughs> and she says, what do they do when it rains? And we kind of all laughed at her, and we gave her this, this nickname, C-. minus. <laughs> so it's uh, lived with her for, for quite a while, but... Now, I, you guys heard Archer, my, our other brother, A yell A+. plus, Because um, that's, that's where we're at. Like, you've accomplished that. You've got the highest, like, degree, like in the family, you've got the highest degree. <laughs> we're proud of that. Um, she's had to move, raise two kids, work full time. Um, she's got a baby on the way. Um, she's a badass, so, yeah, and deal with us, uh, one of seven kids, um, so, I love you. Hello, I'm a very nervous person, so I'm tr gonna try to express how proud I am of my mom right now, the best I can. Um, my mom is like super awesome and she is always like pushing for things and learning and listening and just providing so much love and effort to the people around her and it's just so cool. And like her being a part of my, ma part of my life is like 
something that I am very proud of because it just, it is a very good resource. <laughs> she, and she always like gives me resources. I'm like, whenever I tell her what work I'm doing, she's like, oh my gosh, I have like 10 resources for that. And I'm like, okay. Um, but I just, I love her so much. She is so good. Um, congratulations to all of you. I'm sure you work so hard and I'm proud of all of you too. Eh, buenas tardes. Antes que nada, pido una disculpa por no poderme comunicar en inglés exactamente, pero lo voy a decir en español. Eh, ya que tuve, tengo el, el honor de subir a felicitar a mi hija, que no podía perder esta oportunidad de subir al stand a felicitar a mi hija Nancy, por estar con todo su esfuerzo, con todo lo que ha, ella ha hecho para estar aquí este día. Y dije, no podía faltar a felicitarla. Eh, también este, felicito a mi hijo, porque son los únicos, los dos que tengo y por los dos que doy lo que más puedo. Y hasta ahorita es lo que he hecho con ellos y les doy las gracias por haberles este, instruido y hacerla llegar a este, a este momento. Gracias. That was a beautiful open mic. That was beautiful. My heart is filled right now. It is my honor to do this part of the ceremony. I want every, everyone's families, siblings, parents, uncles, and aunties to stand up right now. And I'm asking you all to stand because this has been a effort of everybody in this room and beyond. And I'm going to ask the graduates to join them at this moment. <laughs> yes. On behalf of the High Tech High Graduate School of Education, I confer unto you a master's degree in education leadership. Let's throw your hats up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, everybody, and please continue the celebration today. Thank you.